Good morning, Dr. Morning, Jerry. Jerry. Uh-oh. Good morning. Yeah. I thought there was something wrong with my computer and I was trying to fiddle with it. <laughs> Nothing wrong. We hear nah, you loud and clear. We've missed you. Yeah. I've missed all of you. It's like in my week isn't complete unless we have Therapy Tuesdays. And oh. Oh. <laughs> well, That's my kiss. We're, we're going to miss you again next week because you got to take a break. We'll give you a break next week, okay? It will be a break for everyone. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. We are Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Seven days to Chinese New Year! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dr. Jerry, today we're talking about yes. why teens fight. And in, in particular, I think this topic has been spurred on by that video that was going around about yeah. these schoolgirls that were fighting in the car park. They fight in the car park and then one of them kicks the girl in the head. No, Normal and, and uh, kicking and hitting and everything. When we were that everything. age, we used to fight also. Not like I, that. I, I never the fought. Septic tank. In, in the, <laughs> you in know, a septic tank? Yeah. Oh, that's I, gross. I never fought. I've been hit before, but I've never fought. Jackie's bowl. Yeah. Jackie's <laughs> No, I got, I've got to say, in my day, yes, we fought, but it wasn't It wasn't that kind of fighting. I would have thought in your day would have been awful fighting. No, it wasn't that kind of fighting. Really? Yeah. It was that kind of fighting. No, not in my he day. He was with a different group. Yeah. He was with the Dick Lee group. <laughs> no, that's no, I, no. <laughs> Our fighting started in primary six. Wow, it started in primary started six. Started in primary okay. six. That's when you really saw the fights. But it was a different kind of fight. I mean, when someone was down on the floor, you didn't go after them. Mm, you know what I mean? Mm. It was, I don't know. I Why don't know not? Whether, I don't know. I don't know whether the term would be more gentlemanly or what. Mm. I, I don't know. But it was just, there were some things we didn't because do. Because you don't kick someone when they're down. That's, yeah. one, that's, that's simple as that. Just didn't do in, one in championship day. allowed it for. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's very different. And I'm it's called wondering, the football kick. And I'm <laughs> wondering if, if this is part of what is going on. Okay, so Dr. Jerry is here, lest we forget. Yeah. And we're talking about <laughs> fighting. Uh, why teens fight? So why do they? Hormones. <laughs> Raging. <laughs> No, I mean, um, I didn't see the, the video at all. Oh, um, it's terrible. I just, wa I just watched it. It's terrible. So I saw that, I, I caught snippets of it, but it was just too uh, unpleasant to mm. watch. Mm. Yeah. Very yeah. disturbing. That's why you see people need to at least know how to defend themselves. That's very important. If you don't learn how to defend yourself, this is what happens. But we're not so much talking about how to defend yourself. We're, we're talking about why it starts in the first place, right? Well, that is true. That is true. A little trivia here. Do you know human psyche is um, built to be more aggressive than even apes? Our really? hands, our fists. Yeah, so researchers have found that our hands, when curled into a fist, fist. is even more aggressive than uh, apes. Than animals. Wow. So we're worse than animals, my goodness. Mm. Good Lord. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so boxing is, I think, noted even before uh, BC. I mean, uh, yeah, BC, during BC. the, the medieval, medieval times. Mm. But anyway, teens, teens, teens. Um, why they fight? Okay, let's go back to the developmental stage, right? So they are changing. They are trying to establish their own identity. Um, they, they are starting to have a lot of abstract thinking, but their thinking is still very much black and white, very mm. concrete. So good is good, bad is bad. Mm. Mm. And it's also, but, uh, I suppose, trying to fit in. You yes. know, the constant need to, to, to seek approval from their peers and not fitting in or trying to fit in. And, I and it sounds like you're making excuses but this for is not so much fight. fighting. I think this is bullying okay. more than this anything is, This else. one is bullying because there were like three yeah. or four girls on one. No, but you find yeah. that you find yeah. that through school all over the place, right? You you very seldom these days see one on see one. a fight with one on one. It's six yeah. on one. It's five on we one. We don't see it. Doesn't mean it doesn't, doesn't exist. What it's been I going suppose. on for years and years and years I mm. since mm. our parents' time. People have been fighting, you know, in school, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, mm. but this is bullying. You know, yeah. so many of them ganging up on, on one, one girl, yeah. beating yeah, her while she's on the ground. That's bullying. Yeah, mm. Dr. Jerry. Mm. 
And I wonder how she can even permit herself to be in that situation in the first place. I mean, unless they, she was walking in the car park and they cornered her. And they cornered her. Or what was it that you know? Um, it's like the the what we see, right? Somebody asking another person to the car park and having a sparring session there. She should call the taxi driver. Have you guys watched the Netflix uh, Korean show? No. Taxi just, driver? I just no. finished it last oh, night. <laughs> you know what I mean, right, yeah. Chalni? Uh, she should call the what, taxi driver. What, what do you mean? What, what, what? what? I yeah, didn't tell us. Okay, no I'll more. explain it on the Big okay. Show TV. Right. Meantime, <laughs> here's Michael Jackson with Jam on 1FM 91.3. Really? Right now. Okay. Yeah. Why? Tell us. So, so this guy basically helps out, um, you know, people who are getting bullied, people who oh. are having uh, suicidal thoughts and all that, okay. want to commit suicide. Wow. And all that. He goes in there uh, as justice. So he's like yeah. Superman. Almost. Yes. Okay. But even better, good-looking Korean guys. Oh, and really? All. Okay. Yeah. And he's a taxi driver. He's a taxi driver. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because I, 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 I think sometimes when we go, oh, kids are going through, this is my personal take, kids are going through a developmental stage, oh, they're trying to fit in, oh, this, oh, Ooh. that, oh, the other. We just seem to be making excuses for what is generally just bad behavior. No, but we're not, not, it's not really making excuses because if you remember when we were teens, it's so, teenage years are so hard mm. they're really really hard like dr jerry was saying you're going through your hormonal changes uh things are happening to your body for for boys and girls that they don't understand uh you go through this really ugly duckling stage mm -hmm. you remember those you know you're oh, all lanky goodness. you're all like acne, acne you know yeah. your hair doesn't sit right you've got braces on you're either skinny or you're large you know you're, you're not you, you haven't grown into yourself so and especially now with social media i feel the the need to hit perfection yeah and some kids don't and some kids do some kids have more money some kids have less money i think it's just like it's 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 a lot to deal with and what has changed no i mean i'm not saying why, anything why saying, is it so violent these I, days no it's not these days but it's always it's been not, violent it, it looks more violent these days yeah. because the news gets up quicker because of social yeah. media it's yeah. always happened. I'm not making fun of no, St. No. Joseph's. So no, let me just no, tell you no, that, okay? No. Yeah, no. But then the impression I'm getting from you right now is that you've <laughs> never experienced that kind of violence in St. Joseph's. But we there were experiencing been, yeah. that kind of violence in, in St. Pat's all the time. I, yeah. never, we nev I never experienced it. Baseball I mean, we bats. Oh. You know, as in like, oh, really, yeah. Never. Oh, yeah. As in like, never. really, really I mean, full these on are outside fighting, of man. school, right? Outside, outside of school. Outside of school. Outside of school. I, I mentioned yeah. like Jackie's Bowl. Yeah, or, yeah. Outside you of know, school. And the septic tank. Someone will I've, be watching outside. Yeah. You know, I've, well, I've got to admit, two gladiators get into the tank. <laughs> I, I never experienced that in secondary school. In primary six, I had one fight at the end of primary six because there was this one guy through my entire primary school life. He was, he was, a, he was a pain in my ass. <laughs> Um, and it was almost a tradition in St. Michael's. Uh, we got together, uh, a ring of boys was formed, and we fought. So this is, you're talking about your personal experience, yeah, but so I I've mean never, around you... I've never, that's why I don't understand it. I don't understand this violence yeah. that, that, kids, that kids go through. It's, it's, it's beyond my comprehension. Uh, yeah, well, that's seriously. Maybe if we look at some of the reasons why they fight, right? Okay, maybe. You know, so one, because they are like this transition stage, they don't have the full awareness of what they are feeling. They don't have the words to articulate exactly how they feel. Um, they want to be accepted. I think the word that are uh, very commonly used for this generation would be FOMO. Mm. Fear okay. of missing out. So mm. if my friend does something, I also want to do it. Um, well, they, that's just they, peer pressure, isn't it? That everyone goes through? It could be because you want to be part of a group. You want to figure out your identity. Mm. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes we need to feel the the pain you know literally and figuratively because uh, before we figure out where we place ourselves in society mm. um they probably think that fighting is cool especially given all the violence that they see on the media i still mm -hmm. think that fear plays a very very huge yeah. part yeah. i mean 
when we venture on the big show TV, it's uh, it's very intellectual, it's fun, but it doesn't you know turn into something that is violent or ugly. Yeah. Yeah. But on TV, it uh, on the media in the shows. Um, in that two three hours, you need to get things done. Bam bam bam, all the action. Yeah. So they think that that's the right way to go, right? Um, and I think that sometimes some of these kids that are a little bit more uh, domineering in personalities don't know how to manage their power. So mm. there's a little bit of that trying out and uh, abusing their power. Does this go back to, um, without sounding stereotypical, upbringing? Yeah, it was about to ask. <laughs> um, sometimes it really doesn't matter. I've seen uh, very well-educated parents or very um, lovely parents. You know, it doesn't matter the, the education, education level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they say, I don't know what to do with my child anymore. I don't know why he has become like that. He was not like that when he was in primary school. So it could be Bad influence. Company. Yeah, influence. I was going to say, you mentioned something earlier, like uh, when you're on, when we're on the big show TV, I mean, we do have our disagreements and we do have our no, de- debate. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have our verbal debates, but you also mentioned something about teenagers not being able to articulate their emotions and their feelings into words. And that's why it turns into physical action, like violence. Yes. Yes. Like we so could easily we, get into a physical fight, but we're more intelligent than that, right? So we yep. use words. We won't fight with you, Gil. <laughs> yes, okay. you do. We've yeah. had the arguments. Most, have you had myself yeah, a fight? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can be the referee. I'm the referee. I'll, I'll tell you a very cute story. I'll tell okay. you a very cute story about not being able to articulate, okay? So this happened to my little girl uh, when she was, I think, only two, two years old. Mm. Um, and I, uh, there was this little boy that kind of smacked her in, in Oh, class. no. How dare. Yeah, yeah, oh, dear. yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, but, but, but kids being kids, right? Did she smack you him know? back? No, I'm joking. Ah, so yeah. was, okay. <laughs> the, the teacher told me about it. Uh, my little girl on, at that moment did not retaliate at all. Uh, and I said, well, kids are kids. So we, we left it as that. Mm. The teacher made them apologize. It was all done in class. The next day, the teacher came to me and said, oh, um, Amber's mommy, uh, <laughs> your daughter bit the other boy. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, dear. <laughs> as in, as in I, she, she went to bite him? With her teeth. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep, oh yep. The feisty little one. She actually thought about it the entire night and she took her revenge. How wow. Wow. Two. She was two. Two. Yeah, yeah. They, they were not that verbal. She was not able to tell me what happened. But she thought about it and she used her way. I mean, this this is when you don't have words and you use a physical method to take revenge. But my right? goodness, Jerry, I mean, she she had the mind to, you know, sleep on it. And she woke and up the next day and one. she said, you know what? This boy still deserves to get bitten. No, you know, Jerry, I mean, we're talking, we're talking about a child who was how old? Two. 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 I'm talking yep. about kids who are 12 and are pulverizing someone. You can think at 12. Your not thought processes at two are completely different. They're, they're mm. different, but not all kids mature that quickly as well. You no, know? Like, but, but yeah, two, I mean, so they don't I even know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel so, that way. Okay, so maybe that seems a bit far away for FD. So mm. I had another teen, uh, uh, an older teen, right? And um, I had been seeing him for some time for his behavioral issues. One day, mom called very desperately. We can't get him to open the door. Everything is quiet in his room. Um, I think he needs to come down and see you, you know, because mom was very, very worried what was happening inside the room. He was locked in his room for a couple of days already. So he, thank goodness he was willing to come down. And when he came down for a good 15 minutes, right, he just sat there. Um, and, you know, I stared at him. And then I realized, oh, but if I add up all the behavior, he, he and then I, I hazard something. I said, okay, Auntie Jerry, you will guess what happened, okay? 
uh, and you let me know whether it, it, it is the truth. And I said, you got dumped, right? Like a girl rejected you, right? Oh. And he said, popped up and he was like, oh, how you know? <laughs> you know, but given all the slamming, all the, yeah. you know, like your room being very depressive i just added up all the behavior and i made a guess so i guess correctly lah. so that's where he started talking but this is a teen who is articulate you know able to converse but was not able to talk about things he was not able to express mm. his emotions how old was he um uh, uh 15 16 mm. Yeah. yeah, slamming doors. He was being quiet. So his parents, his mom thought he was doing drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was his way of articulating the slamming the doors, the not speaking. Slamming the door, not speaking. You know, locking himself in the room, um, not coming out for two days. They could have yeah, easily so been what? translated to physical violence as well, right? He would be. He mm -hmm. he can. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was a potential. I mean, if we provoked him enough he would just clobber you up right okay. So, okay without discerning yeah he they cannot discern okay, okay. let's go for a traffic update first okay, cool. yeah okay stand by Back with Dr. Geraldine Tan of The Therapy Room right here on The Big Show and The Big Show TV. We're talking about why teens fight mm -hmm. this morning. So, Jerry, you why were mentioning fight? this child who finds it difficult to, to communicate, to express, verbally express. Yep. So, yep. so, so uh, th th tell me if I'm wrong. To express emotions. Emotions. So... This is why I'm a very big advocate, and Glenn will know this. I've done this for years and years and years. Parents, I feel, have a big responsibility in, in this area where from a very young age, they've got to learn to step back as a parent and start to be their child's friend. And through that, they're going to, the child is going to be able to learn how to communicate because there's a friend there who is not going to judge me. You know, mm. someone who loves me, who isn't going to judge me, who will just sit there and listen. And it needs to start at a very young age. But not all parents have the ability to connect yeah. that way. Not all parents do. And not all kids turn out right. Either. Yeah, exactly. Well, even exactly. after all that. Yeah. Even after being a friend, yeah. because I mean, your parent is still your parent. Yeah. There are still certain things that you're not going to tell them. Okay, sure. again, you're, you're, yeah. you're lucky, yeah. Yeah. You're I, lucky I'm, I'm everything lucky. everything worked out well. With your girls. Yeah. 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 You're coming yeah. from one yeah. perspective. Yeah. 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 But FD isn't wrong. FD no, isn't yeah. wrong. Um, during this period of time, parents or t the adolescent stage, parents relearn their children and children relearn their parents. And yeah. that's one thing that we, we also facilitate in sessions because... I think it's right. If you want to be a friend that don't judge, you have to have the child relearn that and the parent to relearn the role. It's mm. re-rolling mm. of both sides, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because when the child is younger, the child, the parent has to take on that role of um, what is right and what is wrong. So they need to guide the child and be the compass so the child has only known their parents in this way right so when they are um you know during the the adolescent stage when they are going through that stage then they need to understand the parents need to let go and understand that okay my child can start to draw their own compass mm. not be their own compass but draw their own compass and the parents be alongside with them to draw together with them. But it is not easy. No. So you're, so you're talking about re-rolling between the parents and the children. So let's say yeah. someone who is listening has already a teen that is showing signs of, say, aggression or, you know, not being able to articulate their emotions into words. How do you re-roll? You know, what are the steps to re-roll because you didn't start when they were younger? Let's talk about it uh, on The Big Show TV. If you want to continue listening to this topic, all you have to do is log on to Facebook at facebook.com slash 1FM913. Up next, in excess, need you tonight on 1FM91.3.
Done, well done. Okay, Take your so time. You've got a really good question, Angel. So, I mean, is it a case of too little, too late? Or, you know, how can parents start to not reverse, but, you know, just sort of mend, the, mend those bridges and re-roll between the two? So a lot of teens say, I don't want to be with my parents. I just want them to leave me alone. But interestingly, when I say, okay, then, you know, you just go to boarding school, you just be on your own. <laughs> they would say, the teens would say, no, actually, I want them around. I, I yeah. still need yeah. them to nag me. You know, so um, parents still can be around. Choose activities, right? Go out with your teen, um, but let them choose. Maybe mm. they just mm. need a, a meal. Maybe they want to do an activity with you, which they never got the opportunity to. And please, please choose your battles. Don't nag them about each and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I think yeah. I think one of the failings, uh, again, tell me if I'm wrong, Jerry, is parents tend to do what they think the child wants, wants to do, do mm. rather than ask the child, Hey, what do you want to do? Yeah, mm. where do you want to yeah. go? Yeah. And yeah. that that can yeah. be a very yeah. big mistake. Because when you let yeah. the child say what they want to do, you will learn what an amazingly bonding experience that can be. Yeah. Mm. Because the yeah. child is yeah. now in their element sharing their element with you. So is that is that the case yeah. where where you're empowering the child to make the choice and yeah. therefore helping them to mature? So you offer them that decision-making process. You mm. offer them a space of safety and warm embrace that they still belong in your space. So a lot of parents start scolding them, shouting at them, mm. um, you know, faulting them. What it does is it pushes them away from the safety of the home, right. which is very, very dangerous. Mm. So you hear this... Oh, many people don't know, my, but my past was I dealt with children um, that were on the guidance program. That means they were caught and they are being charged, but they are put on a program. Right. So, um, yeah, so many of these uh, teens, they, they would, oh, I lost my train of thought, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. That's all right. We were talking about uh -huh. re-rolling and retraining and you're talking about the guidance program. Uh, the the guidance, guidance, the guide, yeah, guidance, the guidance, guidance program. But I really lost my train of thought. Okay. But it's okay. We will, we, I will find it again. But I think many of these teens, they, um, oh, I remember already. So many of these teens were from gangs, secret societies. Mm. And one thing that they often say is that uh, I don't find any love at home. I don't find any warmth at home. But my brothers. You know, as yeah. in the band yeah. of brothers, you know, offer that these, this is my family. Yeah. So they call the secret society or the band of brothers, my family. Yeah. And I can live without my family of origin because these band of brothers look after me better than my own parents. It's a sense yeah. of belonging yeah. and, and people listening to yeah. you and, yeah. and always being there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know, it's it, very powerful to hear because yeah. you know um, the parents actually love their children so much, and they want the children to come back. But each time they come back, they the the child just gets scolded or the teen just gets scolded. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sad. It's but you know sad. back to that girl who was beaten up, right? I yeah. hope she made a police report. Well. Uh, if you know, I think anyone who gets bullied, right, either report it to your principal immediately mm. or if it's really uh, of a violent nature or whatever, make sure you make a police report. Mm. I think it's well, safe we, enough to do it here in Singapore. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. So on the side of the, the girl that was beaten up, I agree with you. But during your teen years, you do stupid things. Yeah. And what if this was one of the stupid things that the, these other girls that were beating her up didn't realize? They, 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 they are the here and now, right? The here and now stage, very concrete. They don't think of consequences. They yeah. think, didn't think that it was such a huge consequence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, they have to deal with all the consequences, but many of them are so impulsive, they don't even think about it. Hmm. We've got a comment on our Facebook page, uh, Jerry. 
how much of this fighting that we see in kids is actually a way to hide their own weakness and their own insecurity? Very good. There are definitely a group of them that um, are dealing with a lot of things within themselves. They don't feel too great about themselves. They need that booster to bolster their confidence. Um, some of them had been bullied before. So they, they say, um, if I don't hit the other person, the other person will hit me. So they right. lash out first. Bully or be bullied. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, some of them are, are have family issues. Their family is going through a very tumultuous time. So they take it out in that another environment that is supposed to be safe. Okay, hold um, on, Jerry. Uh, we're going to go for a traffic uh, update, okay? Stand by. Okay. Back with Dr. Geraldine Tan of the Therapy Room on The Big Show and The Big Show TV right here on 1FM 91.3. Once again, good morning, Jerry, and uh, thanks for talking about um, fighting fighting teams. So, Dr. Jerry, just now, um, we were on on The Big Show TV, we were talking about why they could possibly uh, feel the need to resort to violence. And uh, FD had brought up the topic of Oh, oh, someone on our Facebook actually. Yes. What was the what was the question uh, or statement? The, the question was how much of uh, these fights that we see in kids today are actually a way of hiding their own weakness or insecurity. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if you are confident with yourself, if you know what to say, what to do, you would not resort to using your fists and mm. your legs. So it's like the hands are not enough. The licks come out also. Muay Thai, you know? Muay Thai. So it boils. <laughs> so it boils down to low self-esteem, jealousy. Uh, I I don't know. A, a lot of negative emotions that come through. Well, at this point, when it's done in this situation, right? So. Uh, Glenn was talking about Muay Thai. If you're doing it in a martial arts situation, it's totally different. It's legitimate. But when you purposefully, intentionally hurt someone that has is defenseless, right? Then that becomes bullying. That becomes yeah. senseless fighting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. But I mean, according like like to the teens that were bullying, to them, it it makes total sense to do it. You know, I mean, yep. they do it because uh, for whatever reason, it could be jealousy. It could be, you know, you you stole my boyfriend. You you owe me some money. What, whatever the reason is, to them, it makes sense. This is why we beat you up. Mm, so when they are um, ne- feeling negative, so the people that that uh, fight, right? When they are feeling negative, when they are unable to articulate in a very sensible manner or in a rational manner, they start to psych themselves up. There's a lot of physical changes that goes through their body. So clenching of teeth, their their, their heart starts to pump really hard, you know, and they just continue to fuel that by. Um, just ruminating over all the negative thoughts and they literally have to psych themselves up for war. It's like how you prepare yourself Mm. for a fighting match, right? You have to prep yourself. They do it um, for themselves without realizing it. You know, their breath kind of breathes a little bit faster, more shallow, you know, and their muscles start to tense up. So, the next thing that they realize, they are already punching the person without restraint. They don't have any restraint, so they just um, uh, hit the other person mm. without thinking about yeah. their, their um, uh, blows. I really, I really do think these yeah. people need a vent. You know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and taking up a sport. Now, I always mention Muay Thai because I feel like it's such a beautiful art. It is. It's such mm. a beautiful martial art, and. Um, in a, an excellent uh, uh, form of exercise yes, as well. Is, is. I think if these kids were to take up a martial art like like Muay Thai, mm. they would never want to fight ever again. Yeah, and mm. also you know because you learn discipline as yeah, well, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. There is a discipline. A there is a code yes. that you learn. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's what's yes. important. Mm. Yes. So that one can start from when they are very, very young. So I hear a lot of pe- uh, parents having myths about sending their children to a martial arts. They say, I don't want my child to be a fighter. Yeah. yeah. But 
for martial arts, it's for self defense yes. and for discipline. discipline it is yeah. not to fight. Yes. Yeah, it's I, always the people who can't fight who want to fight. Well, I'll tell you, it's I'll, true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll, and you can also find you can also find a sort of family away from family within this these kind of classes as well yeah. right you can yeah. you can mm. uh, when we come back i'm going to tell you jerry a story of my dad in school and he always repeated this story to us numerous times every time we fought he would repeat this story to us mm. i'll tell you that story in a while did you hear that every time we fought <laughs> oh my oh, yeah, my he said oh no it never happened yeah, like I mean, no, no. every time we fought yeah i'll explain that every time we fought as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay here's natalie and brulia with ton on one fm 91.3 every time yeah, explain we explain yourself my my brother was always bigger than i was he was twice my size but and mm. when we argued my mother and father were always worried that he would use that physical strength he would have against me. Mm. So dad would always sit us down and tell us the story. When dad was in secondary school, uh I'm not going to mention the school although Glenn will go mention it. Uh, <laughs> must be St. Joseph's. Uh. No, no, it wasn't. My dad ACS, was not uh, my, my dad was not ACS, a St. Joseph's boy. Go, not CD. ACS. Um but they had a brother. It was a Christian school. Right. There was a brother. When kids were fought were caught fighting in school. They had a boxing ring in school because they, they had a they had a Saint team. Pets, no. Saint they Joseph's. had a team. And he would get the boys who were fighting, put boxing gloves in them, mm. on them, um, yeah. explain a boxing match, and go. You fight, fight till one of you drops. Nice. That was the rule. You fight till one of you drops. Ah, oh, okay. That's a great, great, great yeah. way to sort. And things my out. father and was from St Andrews School, and they used to have that as well. There you go. Okay, there's a mention team. School. St Andrews. I it's didn't Andrew. mention school. I, I St Andrews. Uh, Andrew. oh, He's not saying no. He's not saying no. So, so, and you know what they developed from this? They developed a fantastic school boxing team. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Because of that. And the, these boys, uh, well, once they reached that boxing team level, yeah. Never fought in school, you know. Wow. My father was part it of the stopped. boxing team at St Andrews. It just stopped. But he used to fight all the time. But again we're saying because they were taught <laughs> discipline, they were taught rules, they were taught a code, yeah. Yeah. they learnt control. So my question is, to kids like this who fight in schools, do we know what schools do to help them? Do we, Dr. Jerry? Different Be schools manage it differently. I love the way um uh, uh St Andrews dealt with it, you know, yeah. and they have a really lovely set of teachers even until now uh, yeah. to manage the boys and boys can be boys, yeah, very yes. out of hand sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Um but there are different methods. I think that the whole idea of giving them control is amazing and you hit the nail on the head because when they have no control hands legs you know parang uh, uh, pipes all come up yeah right? horrible yeah no control but when they are taught discipline and control they learn how to deal and manage things in a more refined and sophisticated manner yeah mm. yeah mm. Mm. refined and sophisticated i like that Not many of those mm. around. Uh, okay. Refined and sophisticated, <laughs> classy to the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what uh, what do you say to uh, parents or teachers or anyone who is uh, who has got a teen under their care to do if they spot aggression? Okay. So the first thing is not to fault them. So I said it, and I I kept say, uh, saying it throughout. So don't fault them. Find out what the root cause is, and the root cause isn't the other person hurting me or saying something against me. It usually is something else. So go to the root cause, pick your battles. Right? You don't um, try and uh, nag them about each and every action. Okay, okay one second, on, Dr. Jerry. I'll ask you again, and then we'll wrap it up. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Coming up in just a while, the uh, editor of SG Carmart, Julian Cole. But right now, we're speaking to Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. And we've been talking about teen fighting. Yeah. Yeah, and we're just about to wrap it up. So, uh, Dr. Jerry, uh, what do you have to say to any parent, teacher, or anyone who cares for a teen? Uh, what do you say to them uh, if they spot aggression in the teens? Okay. First thing, not to fault them. Second, go to the root of the problem. 
third, don't nag the, the teen. Um, you know, choose your battles. So don't nag them about each and everything. Um, try not to take things personally. Please don't take things personally. When they are in anger mode, the arrows shoot anywhere. So mm. the parents and teachers can also get bear the brunt of it. Uh, but please do not take it personally. Separate the behavior from the child because the child isn't there to try and make your life tough or difficult. Don't use violence with them. Okay, the last thing you want is to be violent with them, which then, you know, normalizes their behavior. Yeah. You really don't want that. And finally, give them space. Just step away when you when they tell you to step away just be close by but you know don't just don't um invade the the, the space mm. okay and don't yeah. hover i i yeah. just yeah. yeah okay jerry what do you do for exercise huh? Huh? what do you what do, do for <laughs> exercise i know we just jumped right out of that topic into another you know yeah. Mila. okay yeah. <laughs> How is that relevant at all? You'll find out in a while. Okay, what do you do so for exercise? What do you do for exercise? Uh, I, I, I go on the bike, but I don't do like the, the spin, spinning spin right. classes. I don't, yeah. Okay, okay. Jerry, yeah. let's do Muay Thai together. <laughs> Why there not? it is. Oh, we, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'm actually quite scared, you know. I'll arrange for a trial class, all right? Because a friend of mine just opened a new Muay Thai uh, school. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. it's beautiful. If he can't get I'll on your couch, you he'll get you in the ring. Then actually, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just going with what Glenn said. You know, we 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 talked about kids going into martial arts and all that for discipline or whatever. But I'm sure even just exercise mm. would be a way of venting. No, absolutely. I'm looking at I Jerry. Know. I think Muay Thai is perfect for her. There you go. Oh, she will Jerry. love it. I, I, I will take up the challenge and then we can talk about it and the, the psychology behind it. Oh, yeah. 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 I love that. Psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to make okay. arrangements. Angel can come along also. I want to. I, I love yeah. Muay Thai. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. Jerry. We, a very yeah. short one. I, sure. I just a very, really, really short one to all the readers that um, have read about the twins. You know, oh, we no. are yeah. all very, very, very um, shocked and saddened by it. You know, and I know I've got a flood of texts. I've got floods of uh, texts on every uh, media saying, Dr. Jerry, please talk about it. I didn't really want to talk about it because there wasn't any um, more information. information. Yeah. And I think we let the boys rest in peace for yes. for now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not because I don't want to talk about it, but because it is still a very painful topic for many, many parents. And we might pick it up the, about the challenges of, um, you know, being a parent to special needs children in another uh, on another day. Yeah. Okay. Still way too raw and, for that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. And to end, um, Nelson Mandela says, it is in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. So it is in our hands. Thank awesome. you, Dr. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry. We'll see you in a fortnight. Have a good Chinese yes, New Year. Come see my time. Come see my time.